Good morning and happy Friday. Hello, everybody. If you're looking at this new get up and space and going, who this? Just know that I'm not home. This is the home of a beautiful friend of mine, and it's a gorgeous home. Um, I'm visiting New Jersey, visiting my friends and family, and I'm so happy. Um, it's a little gray, but it's beautiful here. And it's just, I was thinking of, um, is it Bon Jovi, the song that says, who says you can't go home? Cause I lived in New Jersey for 26 years um, and it's kind of nice being home. But anyway, more about the North Fork. We are so excited this morning to have with us Chris. Um, if you don't know who Chris is, I'm sure. Hi, Kim. Um, if you don't know who Kim is, um, Kim is um, sorry, Chris is, I'm sure you will recognize him um, from his art. Um, he has a lot of pop-ups locally in the area. Um, so I'm excited to be talking to him. Um, it's the, Hi, Tracy. Good morning. How are you? Um, it's going to be just Tracy and me this morning. Um, unfortunately, Lauren has a little bit um, of a cold, and so she won't be joining us. So, Lauren, if you're watching, I know you said um, you don't have your voice. <clears throat> I feel like I'm losing my voice this morning, um, but I hope you feel better soon. We will certainly miss you, um, and I hope we will get to all see you again next Friday. Um, hi, Tracy. I don't see you. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. How are you? It's good. You. I don't see Tracy yet. I don't. Did you have difficulty logging in? Because I'm in a new location. So. No, no, not at all. Good, good. Um, so, are you? Uh, tell us. Let's start. Jump right into it. Sure. <laughs> For Tracy to join us. I was just telling everybody. Lauren's not um, going to be able to join us today because she had a cold and she lost her voice. So you'll just have to put up with my voice for a little bit more. <laughs> Not a problem. Good there morning. Tracy, how are you? <laughs> Good morning. You can see I still have my jacket on. I literally just ran in the door from getting Charlie from the groomer. But <laughs> I and I was trying to log on from the driveway and Charlie's paw kept hitting oh. the screen. <laughs> <laughs> and switching me over, so I'm sorry. <laughs> oh no, it's all good. Like I said, I'm I'm sitting here in my in a friend of my uh, beautiful home, admiring her gorgeous surroundings, going, "Oh my God, I'm in like such a happy place." So yes, everything's good and happy. I'm driving back later today, so I will physically be on the North Fork. But I'm so excited to continue our North Fork chat. Yes, I know, and we're missing Lauren today. She's feeling under the weather, but I was looking forward to congratulating her on her uh, her awards, her placing in the cast. Um, oh my God, such a stunning, it was just- I know. Bottom. It was like a ballerina, you know, like almost like one of those um, ga princess gowns, everything about it. Yes, was very much like a princess gown, yes. Chris, <laughs> able to go to the Festival of Trees, which is what we're talking about. I don't see Chris anymore, do you see him? Uh, I guess I do frozen, but now he's. I'm seeing a request again today. Again, okay. so let me see. I guess he froze somewhere. Hmm. There he is. Sorry Hello. About that. <laughs> That's okay. I got booted <laughs> off somehow. That's it's, all right. We were just talking about the Festival of Trees. Did you get to go? I didn't go. No. Um. But I did uh, donate some art. Oh, lovely. Uh, um. Of course. Yeah. I always um try to help out any local fundraisers uh, if we can. That's amazing. Well, our co-host, Lauren, who couldn't make it today because she's feeling under the weather, had a tree there and it placed. Um, so we were we were just congratulating her on the on her beautiful tree and her collaboration. Oh. Yeah, I'm, I'm, we're back in time from Mexico and, and texted me and we were able to together, go together. But it was so much fun. I know, Chris, we've run into you both Tracy and I at some of the pop ups you had. I think I don't know if you mm -hmm. remember a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. Parade and I think it was outside of Bruce and Sons. Yes, yep. yes. So we were fat. We were fangirling on you. We were like, oh my god, <laughs> it's the guy! It's the guy! He does all those pictures, so, right? And that's what happens. Like when we have you know people on the show, we already are fangirling them. But it was such an interesting uh, moment for Tracy and I at the Festival of Trees because obviously we're fangirling because um, Ricky was there from Ricky TV, who's also going to be on our show later, and Lizzie. So we're all fangirling at them, and then people are like, "Wait a minute, we know we you know you too." <laughs> Works both ways. Yes. It was in such an interesting moment. We were like, yes, we're on the show. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, 
So it's so lovely to have you here, Chris. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Jump right into it. Give us some background. How did you end up with the camera in your hand? Oh, okay. Um, I guess it was just simple enough. Um, I had an iPhone in my pocket. Um, you know, to give me a little background on myself, uh, I'm born and raised here uh, in Greenport, grew up uh, in Greenport. Uh, my father's a commercial fisherman. Um, I started, I, I've been working with my father on and off on the water for, for most of my life. Um, but I sort of um, got back to working with my father again about 10, 11 years ago. Um, and at that point, I think that's sort of when iPhones were, were just coming out, uh, give or take, uh, in, in that time frame. And, um, you know, being that I had a phone in my pocket, that means I had a camera in my pocket. And uh, obviously, the North Fork has no uh, shortage of beautiful scenery, and especially uh, waking up to the sunrise every morning on my dad's boat. It was, um, it was just really just me, uh, just just snapping images of my morning, of my day, um, whether it be sunrises, birds, seagulls, my dad working. Um, although sometimes I would get a little. Uh, get yelled at on occasion to put the phone down and get back to work. But, um, you know, I'm on a working commercial vessel, so it's, it's, it's dangerous and you got to pay attention. But, you know, it was, it just started simply enough as me just wanting to share, um, you know, I, I think initially it was just sunrises going out to work in the morning. And um, over time, I think people just started really connecting to the imagery and um, after doing it for a year or so, um, you know, people started asking me for prints. And I had no uh, inclination at that time to become a photographer or really pursue photography in any way. I was just shooting with um, probably iPhone 5 at that point. I don't even, I don't even remember. Uh, probably 5 or 6. Um, so for me, it was really just sharing uh, moments of my day as a working commercial fisherman on the North Fork. So how much of your career now is fishing versus photography? Are you still primarily a fisherman? Yeah, um, I'm fishing more full time now than I did when I first started doing this. Um, you know, when I first started doing this, let's say, give or take, we're looking at 2015, I probably started shooting. I think 2017, I started selling my work. Um, but since 2018, um, I actually quit my bar job and decided to fish with my father full time. Where uh, were you a bartender? I see Patrice says that they miss you as the best bartender. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, I've been bartending on the North Fork since I was uh, 20 years old. So um, I've been bartending out here for quite a while. But I um, most recently I was uh, at Billy's by the Bay for for a couple seasons. But prior to that, um, and most people probably know me from Krabby Jerry's at Claudio's. Okay. Um, I I was the bar manager there and bartender there for seven seasons. Um, and once I decided to um, get out of bartending, I, I was really more focused on. Um, fishing with my dad a little bit more full time, spending more time with my father. And it was sort of at that point too, where I was sort of making the transition into um, becoming an artist um, and, and focusing on my photography a bit more. So I've certainly been putting a lot more time and energy into the photography, um, let's say over the last, you know, four years. Um, and so I just, um, just started working at it more. Um, I still shoot with the iPhone, depending on the situation. Um, that being, that I'm, being that I'm working on a commercial boat, sometimes the only thing that I can shoot with is my phone because I'm working. Um, I do shoot with a Canon now. Um, I'm working on some um, GoPro stuff, um, some videos and stuff like that. So hopefully uh, next year I'll be taking another step forward and, and trying some new stuff as well. So I have a question photography wise, because I also dabble a little bit in photography at using my iPhone mostly. Do you what's the largest size print that you've been able to do without losing resolution from the iPhone? Um, 
That's a tough one. Um, I actually have printed one image 60 by 40. Wow. Um, but it was an ab it was an abstract image, so I think a losing resolution didn't affect the image as much. Um, you know, if you have a detailed image, you're gonna be limited as to how big you can print it. Yeah. Um, but I've done stuff. I think on the iPhone, twenty four by thirty is sort of the top end. Yeah, um, and I remember talking to you the day we met um, at Bruce and Sons about you. You have a printer that you use, like you don't go to like CVS or Target or yes. you, have, yes. you have a professional printer, which I think makes a huge difference. Definitely. In relationship, yeah. Definitely, um, and that allows me to um, have another set of eyes on the image. Um, somebody else that is familiar with dealing with digital files and then reproducing them on paper. Uh, so it certainly helps to have um, somebody else and, and who's open to, to be honest and share their opinion as to whether or not an image is going to work well um, or if I need to tweak it a little bit. So I, um, I have a great relationship with my printer. Um, his name is Rob. Uh, he runs Color Images Lab in Holbrook. So if anybody okay. needs uh, a printer, I would certainly recommend Rob. He, um, he, he, I've been working with Rob since I started doing this. He was actually a bar customer of mine at, at uh, Krabby Jerry's. So when I first got into photography, he's like, hey, I run a print lab, by the way. If you want to, you know, do some prints, yeah. we could start a relationship. Um, and I, I've used him ever since. I, I've had no problems working with him. And any issues that we do uh, come across in terms of images or prints or whatever, um, we resolve it very, very quickly and easily. So I have a really great working relationship with him. Um, and I certainly recommend him if anybody was looking to do some prints. So for anyone who's joining now, this is Chris Hamilton. He is North Fork Fishman on Instagram. You have to follow him. His images are out of this world, really. Um, and and yeah. you do pop-ups. All I know we've seen your work hanging in Bruce and Sons. Mm -hmm. and I both met you there outside doing pop-ups, but you do pop-ups all over. Tell us where people can find you popping. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I've actually, I started doing pop-ups um, at Bruce and Son, I think almost two years ago. Um, and that was just basically, I, I was given an opportunity to set up on Bruce and Son's patio. And this was pre-COVID, so people weren't sitting outside in the winter right. eating, which, uh, of course, now people are. Um, and they offered me the space. I also have my work hanging in the restaurant. I, I have a, I've known Scott my whole life. Um, so they were really awesome about giving me an opportunity. Um, so I started doing pop-ups there. And obviously, it's uh, it's very weather dependent for me because I'm out outdoors. Uh, you know, at Bruce and Son, I do have a little coverage there. Um, but then, so so then COVID hit, and then I was like, crap! Uh, I got shut down doing pop ups for at least six months, I think. Yeah. Um, and then that first summer, I think it was Labor Day weekend. Um, I talked to the guys down at Preston's, um, and Andrew and Peter allowed me to set up on their property. Uh, just on the corner there, looking over the water, looking at my old job and, and stones throw away from my fishing boat. So it was a perfect fit. Um, so I started popping up down at Preston's. Um, and I did that through about October. You know, once you get into November, that neck of the woods sort of quiets down with Claudio's shutting down and Fortino's closing down. Um, and then I just, I was just sort of... Um, trying to find spaces uh when we had the parklets in greenport i was able to do a couple pop-ups in front of kessie um and then when we lost the parklets again i was kind of scratching my head as to well how how am i gonna get my stuff out there and angela from sweet indulgences was um really really nice about letting me set up on her property which is at the intersection of front and main street which was perfect perfect visibility for me and so I just basically say hi to people walking by. Um, you know, I, I'll post it on my Instagram. Hey, I'm going to be setting up today. So people that follow me that are interested can come, come by and, and check it out. But I think for the most part, I'm really just um, meeting people on the street that 
may or may not have any interest in purchasing photography that day, but then they just sort of run into me and we talk and they look at my images and some people walk by and, and keep about their day. Other people stop and buy a few prints. So it's, um, it's, it's hit or miss, but you know, I, I just put myself out there and try to meet as many people as I can. I applaud you on your Instagram tactics of taking a picture of every customer and posting it in your stories. Thank you. Well done. Very well Thank done. You. Not not everybody likes their picture taken. I can say that, but um, but that's it. That's, you know, that's like for someone who does admire your work and then sees you pop up, like that's you know that's a good marketing tactic. It really is. Yeah, and for me, I I don't know if I really, I don't even know how I started doing that to be honest. Um, but it just sort of is something that I do when somebody purchases a print from me. For one, it's it's a it's a surefire way for me to get their name. Yeah, because I, I introduce myself. And then, you know, when I do the picture and post it on Instagram, I'm always saying thank you to Jennifer and Jack or whoever right. it may be. So it, it's a reminder for me to to um, make that experience personal. Um, and, you know, I, I've certainly over the, the last couple of years have had a, um, a lot of return customers and people whose homes I've gone into and done consultations with. So, you know, I, I think art can be a very personal thing. It doesn't have to be for everybody, but, you know, I've had people um, look at my images and cry. I've, I've, I've hugged strangers um, and, and it's, it's a very cool experience for me. Obviously the whole basis of, of selling art is, is to make money, um, but that's really not the, the most important aspect of it for me, it's really connecting with people. Um, and I think being able to take a photo of somebody who's happy to share that picture that they just bought one, it makes me feel good because you know, they're smiling, they're happy and they're, they're, they're happy that they just supported me and purchased something that they're happy to take home. Um, but, but again, it's also just a nice way to connect with people. And from a marketing standpoint, I think it's, it's, it shows people that I'm out there. It shows people that I'm selling my work, that people like my work. And I think that, you know, if you, if, if people see that you're successful in doing what you're doing, they're, they're they sort of gravitate towards you and they want to be a part of that. Yeah. Um, and I, I definitely feel very lucky and very blessed that, um, you know, starting this journey from not knowing anything about photography at all. Um, and just teaching myself. And now I'm actually um, the primary source of my income these days is, is my photography, my art. Amazing. That's awesome. Yeah. Tough. That's a tough space to get to. But I say one of the things I also enjoy about your postings is <clears throat> we all have our favorites. And I, you know, I'm always looking for when someone buys something that I enjoy. I'm like, oh my God, that one is one of my favorites. And you tend to see a lot of the same ones that people mm -hmm. words every time you play that um i want to hear more about what it is like to be working with dad i feel like that's such a unique opportunity and not everybody gets the chance yeah. to have that bonding moment um and especially sounds like you guys go out very early so that's how you start your day mm -hmm. yeah oh yeah we get up early um summertime i'm up at four o'clock um okay. we usually leave the dock around five o'clock um and give or take, we're, we're usually done working somewhere anywhere between 11 and 5 in the afternoon. I mean, you, you never have a set schedule. So that's that's uh, not only a challenge, but also a blessing in, in some ways because you, you just sort of never know what the day is going to bring, good or bad. Um, but, yeah, working with my dad is um, – it's a lot of things. It's a, <laughs> it's a challenge. I mean, Time you work with, anytime you work with family, there's that family dynamic that can be a little bit challenging. Um, but I, I feel very, very lucky to be able to share the time with my father on the water um, to learn from to learn from somebody who is is probably one of the best at what he does. I mean, he's done this his entire life, um, and the amount of respect I have for him after maybe not realizing it as much as a kid, you know, I was like, Oh, dad's going fishing. 
Mm -hmm. All right, I'll see you in a week. And then dad comes back. And, you know, I did it a little bit as a kid, as a teenager, into my 20s, a little bit here and there. Uh, but certainly not to the extent that I'm doing it now. Um, so the level of respect has, has grown tremendously because it, it just, the amount of work that is put into being a successful commercial fisherman is, it, it's daunting. It's, 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 if you're not 110% committed to doing it, you will not succeed. Um, if you're doing it for fun, that's one thing. If you're doing it recreational, that's one thing. But, it, you know, to be a, a successful commercial fisherman, you have to be 110% committed. And so my dad allows me to, to be a part of that without actually having to be 110% committed. I mean, obviously, when I'm on the boat, I'm 100% committed to being there for him working that day. But it also gives me an opportunity to, um, to share some of my imagery and to capture imagery. I do the majority, uh, I would say I do the majority of my photography for my father's fishing boat. Yeah. And that gives me a very specific niche, um, which has been a godsend for me because I'm not competing with, you know, the thousands of landscape <laughs> photographers that are out there. I, I'm shooting different subject matter. I'm shooting from a working boat. So it, it gives me a very specific um, viewpoint that most people probably will never see in person. So it's, it's, it's an opportunity for me to share my lifestyle with people through my images. Um, and North Fork Fisherman is perfect for that, right? I yeah, mean yeah, and I don't even know when I actually came up with that that tag or the 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 handle. Um, probably back in 2014, 2015. I don't even know. Um, I really wasn't doing much social media back then. So, um, but yeah, getting back to working with Dad, um, there's a lot of yelling. <laughs> There's, there's always a lot of yelling on the boat. It's very loud, so you have to yell anyway. Um, and my dad's been working on the boat most of his life, so he's he, he's a little hard of hearing. And plus, we usually wear earplugs, so so there's a lot of yelling to begin with. So if you're if you were um, you know a, a sensitive person, you you might not last too long on the boat. Um, well, da dads are a universal theme, which is why you know yeah. um, we all we all totally understand. Yeah. But I was curious, but what a blessing that you have this opportunity. And like you said, yeah. you had the chance when you were younger, you know, once we're a little bit <clears throat> older, you know, we can appreciate and be more mindful of, of these things. And I think it's what a great opportunity, you know, that you have. Chris, we could chat with you all day long, but I know we're getting close to the end of our half hour. And Sorry, I talk a lot. We definitely <laughs> want to get to our um, five same, five different perspectives. So, Tacey, I'll let you run with it. Maybe yeah. Rapid fire. Every week we ask everyone the same five questions. And as you being a true North Fork local, we're very interested to hear your stories. I think um, you, it, it's always hard for people to say their favorite, but so just can say your favorite right now. Sure. <laughs> um, so tell us your favorite farm stand on the North Fork right now. Favorite farm stand. Um, I would say there's Steps or Latham's. Okay. Sorry, I gave you two, so I'm sort of cheating there. That's but, okay. uh, you know, they, they're just names that have been around since I was a kid. Um, uh, they're both local farm stands, um, and uh, they both have been very supportive uh, for my fundraising endeavors over the years. That's awesome. Universal theme we hear every every week, the, the, the collaboration between everybody on the North Fork, and it's so, sure. I don't think I could hear it enough. Yep. Um, now, as a bartender, I can't even imagine how you will answer this question, but I'd like to hear it. Um, what would be your favorite go-to brewery or vineyard if you had to go today? You said uh, brewery or vineyard? Yeah. Um, brewery or vineyards. I don't do vineyards too often. Okay. Um, but if I had to pick one, I'd probably say Bedell. Okay. Um, and in terms of breweries, I guess Greenport because it's local and um, they have great beer. Awesome. <laughs> I agree on both counts. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So aside from Krabby Jerry's, which we know you're, you're tied to, and Bruce and Sons, if you had to pick a favorite restaurant that you'd like to go to. Restaurant. Wow, that's a tough one. So um, so you know, I, I kind of sort of was thinking about this because you guys give me the heads up on the questions. And, you know, I just kind of came back to um, Hellenic. Hellenic Snack Bar. 
Yeah. And, and the reason why is there's a couple different reasons. One, uh, the owners, the family are, are amazing. They're, they're great people. Um, the food's amazing. Um, but I think for me, there's this sort of idea of it reminds me of my childhood because I, I and it's one of the few restaurants that I can say has been around for, I don't know what, 30 plus years. I, I remember going there as a kid and I still eat the same thing that I was eating as a kid. I get the lemonade, I get the suwaki sandwich with lots of tzatziki and a Greek salad. And I pretty much get that every time I go. And it, it is never a bad meal. It's always, always delicious. And um, the people that work there and the people that run it are, have always been um, friends more than anything else. And they have those adorable. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, they didn't have that when I was a kid. They used to have, um, they did have a foosball table out on the lawn, which as a kid oh, was awesome. So I remember playing foosball and they used to have a, a little shack with video games in it. And this was in the eighties. So um, I think for me, it's my favorite because it, it's, 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 you know, I've been going there for so long. It's um, it's, it's almost like eating at home. That's awesome. That's awesome. So I, I need his but, next question. I think we know the answer to, but yeah, hold on. But my point is you get the best sunsets off of the boat, but the rest of us don't have that luxury. So if we have to stand on land, I have to qualify the question. <laughs> if we have to stand on land, <clears throat> what would you like? Or do you have any secret spots? Well, if I have, I do have secret spots, so I'm not going to share those. <laughs> um, otherwise, it wouldn't be secrets. Uh, so we're, I, I get a lot of sunrises on the boat, so that, that's a little different. But um, sunsets, you know, I, I don't know that I have a necessarily favorite spot. Um, I, I guess I would just say the beach. As long as I'm near the water, uh, whether it's on the boat or, or you know, and, that, and that's the great thing about Long Island is you can you watch the sunrise on the bay, you can watch the sunset on the sound, depending on the time of year. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, I, I think for me, um, just any of the local beaches really offer... Um, a beautiful view of the sunset regardless of the time of year um so i i honestly i don't think i really have a favorite spot um i guess technically my favorite spot would probably be behind my house which i i live on the nature i live on a nature preserve awesome um so i'm able to walk from my backyard through the woods down to the beach and for me it's it's um not only just be able to get to the beach and take the shot but the journey getting there yeah. And um, so for me, it's it's um, a matter of just having the privilege and the ability to just simply walk out my back door and and walk to the beach. I think you just summed up why most of us love living here. Aside from yeah. what we always talk about, the community is so special and so supportive of each other. But also the fact that I know for me personally, I am happiest when I can smell, see, or hear her. And yeah. be North Fork is in every direction with five yep. minutes. Um, but but if you had to sum up being a true North Fork local, why do you love living here? Why do you love being a part of this community? Um, it's just home. It's it's home. It's it's everything to me. It's 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 my heart. It's 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 my family. It's my friends. It's the community. Um, I I, I think one of the biggest and best things about the North Fork is the community. It's, it's, everybody knows everybody. Um, and, and, you know, sometimes as a, as a teenager, that can maybe be a bad thing, you know, you, you uh, sort of takes on a different uh, connotation at that point. But it, it's just, you know, you know, you, I could walk through town with my hand in the air, because I'm just, I, everybody I see, I know, and there's just um, a, a, a great community connection. Um, people have each other's backs, they look out for each other. And, and it's, I think Greenport really defines the true sense of the word community. Um, and it just makes it easy to, to want to be a part of that and, and to help other people. And, you know, that, that's, that's the beauty of the people in, in, in North Fork and in Greenport. And then you, you, you add all the, 
the natural beauty of the area on top of that and and how could you not fall in love with a place like this it's it's um it's certainly changed over the years uh, you know here and there but um you know some of the things that have certainly remained constant are the natural beauty and 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 the the people and the community i love that chris i think you summed it up in a word it feels like home and yeah. that's why so many of us um in me and tracy included um move there and try to make our home there yeah um, speaking of home, I am looking forward to back there this afternoon. It's, um, you know, it's certainly starting to feel like home for me as well. And like you said, you walk out, everybody knows everybody. It's you feel like I'm living in the set of chairs. So it's wonderful. Thank you for joining us and sharing your story. Of course. Everybody follow Chris. Chris, um, a North Fork fisherman. And I guess, do you have a website as well? That is um, No, the website's not online at the moment. So I'm doing uh, most of my... Okay interactions through my social media. Perfect. All right. Follow North Fork Fisherman. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us, Chris. Thanks, guys. Thank you, everyone. See you next Friday. Happy holidays. Bye.